Wake up, people! <laughs> okay, this is day 11 of the Karen Reed trial. Um, nothing really what I saw was exciting. This is the daughter. Um, I thought he was a little tough on her. I thought he was on the verge of probably badgering her. Uh, I thought she was very red-faced and almost crying at one point. Sort of looked did, did she handle herself okay? She did okay. Uh, I don't think she was deceptive. I don't think she added anything or took away anything. Uh, her boyfriend uh, testified after her and said that she was high maintenance. So the biggest thing about her was she left her boyfriend left the party because he had to get up and work, and he lives evidently quite far away. I can't remember if it's 30, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever. He lives far away, and for some reason, she called and made him come pick her up and bring her home. And uh, they made a big deal about that, and when he was testifying, uh, they asked him if he was trying to get some sleep and she just wanted a ride, why did he come pick her up? And he, he got the jury to laugh by saying, well, she's kind of high maintenance and it was just basically easier and everybody kind of laughed. So that was a, sometimes in these high stress murder trials, it gets very serious. Uh, if you listen to my crazy cop stories, when I was testifying that CHP murder trial, whether TSU was murdered and the group I was with ended up finding a gun, I had to testify on where the gun was found, etc. The DA asked me to, or the defense was trying to get me to mess up and was like, what kind of dirt was it on the ground? Was it granite? Was it? And I go, I don't know. I said, I just call it dirt. It was dirt. And everybody started laughing. The jury started laughing. And I, I wasn't trying to be funny, but I was just like, don't try to get me to analyze. I'm not some freaking dirtologist. And they thought it was funny. But, and normally in a murder trial, it's very serious. It's very direct. There's usually bad details. There's usually dead bodies and autopsy and pictures. So it's usually a very serious environment. So when the jury can laugh or can be lightened up, that's usually a good thing. So I think this guy came off as a pretty good witness when he called his girlfriend high maintenance and I just picked her up. Although this witness said, I don't know a whole bunch of times. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Could be. I mean, he left at noon. He kind of said it was at midnight, or we left at midnight, or around midnight. And then the the press or the defense got him jumbled and said, "Well, you know, it wasn't five o'clock, right?" And he goes, "I don't know. It could have." He goes, well, "Do you know what time you left?" And he goes, "No, I already said that." Well, could it have been five o'clock? Goes, "Could have." What well, was it closer? To, was it daylight out or was it nighttime? It was nighttime. So then it was after five. Could have been. I mean, he. He almost came off as a little evasive. And all these witnesses today, uh, the defense... Hang on, I'll get back to this. Okay, so I kind of forgot where I was at on this. Um, this guy, okay, he made the jury laugh. I'm not sure if I covered that. Kind of brought some easiness in the court. I don't think he changed anything. Nothing was changed in uh, into what happened. This person is another friend. I think this might be the last witness of the day. I think she ended up... Oh, no, there was another witness after her. I don't remember what this witness had to, had to do with anything. She just happened to be there. Um, the defense kind of went on her. The big thing I'm seeing is all these people that testified in today's trial were anti-defense. And you could tell, I could tell, their hostility, defensiveness, and not wanting to help the defense. And some may say that's because the conspiracy is true and they're all working together. I think this is normal because the defense has accused their entire family and friends and everybody they know of being a murderous family that's drunk and they planted evidence and they killed a person. When you accuse somebody publicly and put their entire family on a spotlight for murder, it's personal. So because the defense has done this, all the witnesses in today's trial, I think, were a little hostile, very defensive, didn't want to volunteer, didn't want to help, and think the defense is a piece of crap for lying about them, which is reasonable to me. Does the jury see it that way? I don't know. This girl here 
was a critical witness for the prosecution because it defeated the defense story that the body was dragged out later. When they're leaving, she's drunk. She, all these people are big drunkards. I mean, they are drunks. They drink in a bar. They go home and drink. They drink at the pizza shop one of them owns. They drink everywhere. So this, this is a big alcoholic family, in my opinion. So they can be upset at the defense for calling them murderers, but these people drink a lot just from me watching this trial. So she brought her own beer to the house. She drank all her own beer. She never run out. She even admitted she was drunk when she left and she didn't remember a whole bunch and it was late or whatever. But as they're driving away, she sees the body. She says and yells in a car with four people, hey, there's something black in the snow. But because everybody's drunk and yelling, they go, what? And they keep driving. So this helps the prosecution because it defeats the defense from saying they killed the body later and drug it out there. She saw the body when they left, and she left at around 1 or 2, which matches the timeline or supports what the government is saying. So she is now kind of a government-supporting key witness to support or to defeat the defense's alternate theory that the body was planted later and drug out there, which I don't I don't believe, I don't buy. Uh, not yet, anyway. Maybe something will come up. So her, te so he was pretty hard on her and he really tried to drill her and she was pretty defensive and kind of like in his face, kind of whatever. So did the defense make headway today in their thing? If I was an uninformed jury and didn't know anything and just watched today, I would probably have questions in my mind that, man, these witnesses weren't too good and maybe they are lying and maybe there are because there was some natural inconsistencies and the, because the PD didn't interview anybody before, all the interviews were conducted of all these people today like two years later. So when you're asking me something that happened two years ago, you're going to get a lot of, I don't know, I don't remember. That can be construed as you're lying or holding back or their conspiracy. So did this help the defense? Maybe. Did it convince everybody there's a big conspiracy and that everybody else is lying and that all these cops... I don't think so. You never know what a jury's going to do. Um, so this is day 11, I believe, of the trial. Day 11. And I think they only want a half day because they're done. So that's my take. Has my opinion changed? No. I still think my original theory is the same. They were both drunk. They had an argument. He got out either mad or she kicked him out. They had words. She freaking backed up. He threw the glass at her car. She backed up and hit him and said, screw you and hit him. And he fell to the ground and got knocked out and froze to death. Uh, that's, that's my theory. I think that's the prosecution's theory. I haven't really heard that. I didn't hear the opening arguments, but I think that's their theory also. But that's my theory from what I got so far. You can make your own decision. I'm just giving you my input on the witness courtroom, the games, the lawyer tricks, the judges, you know, old witnesses, you know, cognitive memory after two years, you're interviewed about something, a night that you were drinking and drunk, you're going to say, I don't know a lot. I don't know anybody that wouldn't. So to me, I didn't get any revelation today that, ah, oh, all these people said, I don't know. And I don't remember. They must be lying. I didn't get that. Maybe the jury will. All right. We'll end that there. Y'all have a good one. Day 11. Karen Reed cover up. I mean, murder. I mean, poor Karen Reed getting railroaded by the whole government agency of the fire department, EMT, and all the retired cops and all the active duty cops of two different agencies and the state police. Uh, and they're railroading her. That's my take. Y'all have a good one.